Hey, everybody. All right, so I'm not sure if we're going to be using this as our primary mode of learning this section or if I'm just going to publish it as a supplement. Today, what I'd like to do is to try to utilize our terrific trio formulas and tie that together with our new concept that the acceleration due to gravity is going to be 9.80 meters per second squared in the absence of air resistance. And I think maybe I'll just write that as 9.8. 9.8 meters per second per second. In the absence of air resistance, all masses would accelerate at that rate at the surface of the Earth. So how do we incorporate that into the problems? Easy. It just ends up being the acceleration in our problems. But since we're still fairly new at this, let's uh, do a little practice. Now, if there was a reason, a primary reason for doing this worksheet, it's right here. This is a big deal. Positive can either be down or up. The key is you have to say which way it is. So let's, let's see how it plays out when we're doing a problem. This says, number one, a stick figure man drops a shiny, bouncy ball from a height. Students, your 12 o'clock bus will be leaving the front, at the front of the building. It says, a stick figure man drops a bouncy... Are you kidding me? And we're back. The bell's over. I'll edit that out later. If I don't, that would be really awkward. If you just had to watch that, whew. All right, here we go. A stick figure man drops a shiny, bouncy ball from a height of 45 meters. What is the final velocity of the ball? Now, when I look at my information, I'm not sure I have enough. Let's check it out. I'm going to make a chart. So I've got V naught, V, D, A, and T. Now, the initial velocity, if the ball was dropped, is going to be zero. Now, I'm looking for the final velocity, and the displacement, or d, is going to be 45 meters. Now, is that going to be positive or negative? Well, that's the key. In a problem like this, you need to draw a picture. So, standing on the edge of a cliff because that's what almost all physics problems are at this point in your physics career. If that ball is there and it's going to travel down, I am actually going to go ahead and make down the positive direction. So my displacement would have a positive just D, positive 45 meters. Now, my acceleration is also going to be down so that's going to be positive 9.8. And the time, apparently I don't need that. So when I figure out what formula to use, it's going to be V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AD. Now the initial velocity is zero, so that goes away. That's nice. I can... Then solve for V and get it all alone. And now I'm going to plug in my numbers. Get those calculators out. Don't just ride on my coattails. And I get an answer of plus or minus 29.7 meters per second. Now, to get a final answer, which route should I choose? Well, the ball's going down. Down is positive. So the route I should use is going to be the positive 29.7. Now, if you put your pencils down for a second, here's the thing. If I had made up positive, then my displacement here would have been negative. My acceleration would have been negative. And see how the signs would have crossed out right there? 
I still would have ended up with the same answer, but if I had made up positive, then I would have chosen the negative root. Next. In order to find the height of the west wall of the school, a student drops a brick from the top of the wall. If it takes 1.5 seconds to hit the ground, what is the height of the wall? All right, well, I'm going to start that with a picture. And again, I'm going to make up positive. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to make down positive. Let's make down positive. So when I do that, let's go ahead and pull out the information. What formula would I use in order to solve for D? Well, we're still learning this stuff. But the one without velocity would allow me to solve for that. So D equals V naught T plus one half A T squared. The initial velocity is zero. So that's pretty easily. Zero times anything is zero. So that whole term is going to go away. Uh, then... It's already solved for D, so I'm just going to plug in my 1 half times 9.8 times 1.5 squared. And if down is positive, boom, I got 11.0 meters. Now you'll notice that I keep my answers to three sig figs. That's what the AP does. We're not going to fight about it every time. Trust me, you'll appreciate it later. Number three. A candle pin bowling ball is thrown downwards from the Piscataqua River Bridge with a velocity of 7 meters per second. If the ball hits the ground 2.27 seconds later, how high is the bridge? All right. So first thing I got to do, just like always, is draw a picture. I'm going to draw a bridge and a person standing on, the, on it. Let's see. So... There we go. That works. Now, this ball was thrown downwards with a velocity initial of 7 meters per second. So if it's thrown down, gravity's pulling it down, and it's going to go down, you know what way I'm going to make positive? That's right. Down. So now that that's set, let's uh, pull out the information from the problem. So V naught is positive 7. Displacement. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Acceleration is positive 9.8. Now, I know you don't have to put the positive sign. I understand math. Time is 2.27 seconds. So the formula that would allow me to solve for that would be the third one. A baseball player stands on a cliff on Monhegan Island in Maine. If he throws a baseball straight up with a velocity of six meters per second, what is the final velocity of the ball if the cliff is 5.51 meters high? Now, I didn't say explicitly in the problem that it doesn't hit him in the head. But if he's standing on a cliff and the height of the cliff is given, then come on, just go with it, right? So here's a baseball player. He's leaning back. It's hard to throw a ball straight up. He's got his other arm sort of pointing up so he can throw it. And he throws that ball. And it just misses him on the way down. Bam. Now, the first three problems in this worksheet were too easy. This, this is when it gets interesting. Now, because the ball is going up to begin with, I am going to make up positive. And now, when I look at the information that's given, I have to make sure I take that into consideration. 
So the initial velocity, it was thrown upwards and up is the positive direction. Final velocity. Well, the final velocity that you would be solving for if we looked at the entire path of the ball would be down here. I also have displacement, acceleration, and time. Now the displacement, this is what's tricky. For displacement, we're actually going to have a value of negative 5.51 meters. Because the net result is that that ball went up, that ball went up and then back down. And when it did that, this displacement from here to here canceled out. And the net displacement ends up being that five, negative 5.51 meters. That's going to be a sticking point. The acceleration is going to be negative 9.8. So, to solve it up for the final velocity, I can use v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad. v squared, if you want to take the square root here, go, go ahead. Now watch what happens to the signs. Those two signs are going to cancel out. If they didn't, you would end up with a different answer if you had the wrong sign associated. Normally I would do this in one step. Oh, look at that. Which root do I pick? Do you see it? Which way is positive? Point. That's right, up is positive. So if up is positive and the ball is going down at the end, because it turns out I am finding the velocity right here, which root do I choose? Yeah, ball's going down, so I would choose the negative 12 meters per second. Okay, let's back up. What did we do? Well, we looked at some terrific trio problems where gravity was involved. When gravity is involved, or when things are going up and down, we have to define which direction is positive. The signs in our information need to be consistent with the positive arrow that we draw, because that denotes what direction that's going. And then I do the same process I've been doing so far, which is Determine which formula to use, plug in the numbers, and solve it up. Okay? The last one's tricky because you have to choose the negative root of a square root. What's the square root of 4? Plus or minus 2, right? All right. I hope this video was helpful. We'll find out. Hang in there, everybody. Practice tonight on that acceleration due to gravity. And... You'll get this, I promise.